This is Macro Voices, the free weekly financial podcast targeting professional finance, high net worth individuals, family offices, and other sophisticated investors. Macro Voices is all about the brightest minds in the world of finance and macroeconomics telling it like it is, bullish or bearish, no holds barred. Now, here are your hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Serezna. Let's get to that chart deck. Now, listeners, you'll find the download link for the post-game chart deck in your research roundup email. If you don't have the research roundup email, it means you have not yet registered at macrovoices.com. Just go to our homepage, macrovoices.com, and click on the red button over Robert Friedland's picture that says, looking for the downloads. All right, Nick, let's uh, start talking some charts here. On page two, we have the S&P 500. Uh, Before I comment on the technicals, uh, what are the option levels uh, suggesting uh, for uh, support resistance? Uh, So looking at the S&P right now, spot is around 39.85 or so. Expected move for next Friday is 90 points or so in other direction. So that denotes about a 2.25% move in either direction, upside 40.70 downside 3890 now keep in mind heavy supports around 3800 and resistance if you break above that 4000 level will be around uh, 4100 or so from a few months back Right. Now, you know, what uh, What I find really interesting about the S&P here is uh, I, I viewed, especially over the holidays, um, that trade range to be sort of like the market sitting in the pocket of a neutral zone and um, uh, sitting around this 4,000 level, which we're trading at at the time of recording, is um, the FIB retracement of the uh, December market correction. And uh, to me, we're in this post-inflation number window at a really interesting crossroad. If uh, the market can actually build any legitimate traction uh, north of 4,000 on the S&P, it opens the window for potentially uh, a market short squeeze and a little rally and grabbing at risk that could take the markets back to their um, you know second half of 2022 highs, which is in that kind of 42 to 4,300 pocket. I think there's an interesting scenario because there's been such a bearish tone that uh, a market that kind of uh, counter trends that and causes there to be uh, people grabbing at risk uh, is, I think, uh, something that uh, at least we have to entertain as a real possibility. Um, at the same time, in order for uh, the market, in my mind, to get outright bearish, uh, it's got to uh, break down below the previous low of 3,800. Uh, largely, there's a fib zone there. There's uh, the lows from June. There's uh, the lows here from December. And the way I look at it is it's established a bit of a, a, a key support, obviously the 3,800 area as opposed to a specific price point. And so we, if we reject 4,000, we could bounce around, but uh, it'll be really important because this inflation number, at least initially, has spurred a little bit of a bullish reaction. And uh, I think uh, going into next week, it's going to be really interesting whether the bulls can build on this or whether we fade all the way back to the lows. Anyway, moving on, though, when we look at that NASDAQ, in particular, we're doing it through the QQQ. Uh, obviously, we found substantial support last week along its previous low at 260. And we're getting uh, a bit of a retracement up here on the upside. Uh, what levels uh, are you looking at on the Qs? Yeah, as you mentioned, we bounced off that uh, 260 level a few times now over the past few months. And we have had a pretty nice rally up to about 280 level right now. So spot's about 280 right now. Expected move for next week's uh, Friday OPEX, January 20th, is about nine points in other direction. So 3.2% either up or down. That denotes an upside move of about 288, 289 or so, with right now resistance to 290. And again, if we break break above that, then we have a nice way to move up to around 300 to possibly you know 312 or so. Um, on the downside, we have 270. 271-ish or, or so right now. And support again is at the 260 area. If we break below that, as I mentioned last week, 254 is the low from uh, October. And if we break below that, then we're looking at the February 2020 highs pre-COVID. So, you know, this this uh, CPI neutral print, you know, kind of gives the bulls a little bit of hope that, um, you know, we're going to see a, a rally back possibly to the middle of the high range. But, uh, again, I think we're going to see you know a fair bit of burning on 
both sides for the, for the Bulls and the Bears. So if you're buying puts or calls out of the money, I think we're going to see both sides get burned. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah. Do you know what's interesting about that, Nick, is is that, you know, when we uh, uh, look at um, the, the VIX, which, uh, you know, has been hovering in the low 20s and even now in the post CPI is actually dipping below the 20 level. We've had a market that more or less has been forecasting uh, generally lower volatility levels. And so far, it's been right. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of fear and bearishness in the market. And um, usually uh, breakdowns in the market come with uh, substantial increases in volatility. And we just simply haven't seen that in that VIX. And uh, and so far, it's been actually uh, somewhat accurate. But what's interesting is, is that, okay, well, now we've got the CPI, which was you know, arguably the first major news event of the new year, uh, because uh, it's been a really quiet start over the holidays uh, and that first week. And now we're going to have the earnings uh, season uh, in front of us. Uh, and maybe there's going to be an increase in volatility, but that certainly doesn't seem to be reflected in the VIX. The VIX is very passively at the bottom end of this range. What's your take on all of the volatility levels? Yeah, as I mentioned last week, the uh, support area of around 20 on VIX, uh, if you break below that, you know, chance starts to get a bit back up again. The put to call volume right now is 0.17. So there's roughly, you know, five calls being bought per put being bought on the, uh, are open on the VIX. So again, people are betting on a reversal, uh, perhaps to the upside on VIX. You know, as we've seen in the chart, it doesn't stay low for very long, especially in times like these. So when we get down to like the 20 area, that's when you might want to be taking some risk off, perhaps on anticipation of a reversal in the VIX to 25. And as I said before, if you break above 25, that could be a catalyst to a push toward 30 or 35, perhaps on a pullback toward, you know, perhaps fresh lows. Well, absolutely. You know, the, it is going to be interesting because it's al almost certain that 2023 will house some form of a volatile event. Uh, the magnitude and where it goes is all stuff that we try to sort out as traders. But uh, right now, with uh, volatility so low, going into what uh, many people are uh, quite concerned about in terms of the macro conditions going into 2023, it's going to be really interesting to see when volatility starts to get priced back into the market with some spikes. And that's uh, certainly something both of us, I'm sure, will be watching. Uh, moving on, though, to the dollar, you know, I have here on page five that dollar index. And, uh, you know, I was quietly looking for a short term tradable low on the dollar throughout the holiday period. But really, um, what's clear here is that the dollar uh, downtrend and correction continues to be in play, uh, even here in the post uh, inflation number where we got under 103 on the Dixie. I, I still believe the next big move is actually to the upside, not downside. While we can certainly move a couple of Dixie points higher and lower here just from a, a range bound price action, but there's uh, some supports coming in here. And uh, inevitably, if the market reaches a point of uh, you know risk uh, off becoming thematically what uh, happens across the entire spectrum, uh, grabbing at dollars is a very natural thing. And now I'm not outright bullish the dollar where I think where the Dixie's going to all-time new highs. But after uh, seeing such a, a substantial correction in the dollar index over the span of about four months, I think that uh, when, when we start seeing uh, nervousness return back to the market, there's plenty of room for the Dixie to head back toward 110 on the upside. And that's certainly uh, something that's going to be on my mind. Absolutely. Now, moving on to, uh, to page six here, we have a chart of gold. Eric, what's your thinking over here? Well, gold has been hugging trend line resistance for the last week and uh, pushing over it briefly intradays, but it wasn't able to break above that trend line on a closing basis. Now, it did break decisively above that uh, trend line, which has been in place since early November on the CPI print. But that's still intraday, and I'm recording only a few minutes after the data. 
We just broke through 1900, 1900 spot uh, 60 as I am speaking right now. So that's definitely a trend line breakout and a round number breakout. And that's definitely bullish if it holds until the close. Question is, does it hold until the close? So be sure to check the price yourself after the close because uh, obviously CPI prints are also the stuff that blow off tops are made of. So if we're back down to... Uh, you know, 1860 or something uh, by the close. That's another story. But right now, it's looking pretty good. We're up to 1901 spot 60 has uh, gone up a dollar just in the time it took to make those last two sentences come out. Hope that holds for the end of the day, and then we'll be over 2000. But somehow, I don't think that's going to happen. You know, Eric, I know you're watching that 1900 level. To me, the 1900 level is actually important. It's been important for me for, for months, largely because it uh, represents uh, a FIB retracement level of the entire bear market of gold. That's been the theme of 2022. Uh, I think it's going to be incredibly important to see whether the bulls can actually break above 1900 and sustain price action north of 1900. Uh, I, um, while I'm much bigger picture bullish gold i on the interim period i uh, am still just uh watching closely because if we do go through a bigger risk off cycle in the markets there's no reason why gold can't uh, uh mean revert a chunk of this uh, november and december rally uh back to the downside just to while uh, while there's broader liquidity distribution with that said uh i think that uh, gold represents uh, a buy on all dips and i think that's where my mentality is is that rather than cha chasing this rip i'm going to be looking for where's new tactical places to uh to reposition long gold on uh, during uh, dips now uh, on page seven though uh, eric i have uh, that chart on crude oil and i know you commented uh in the market wrap on what's going on here but uh, one of the things that i've been watching and trying to observe is when will we see this bearish price action that's been dominant since june start to neutralize and or even start to show signs of bullishness uh, i know there's a macro theme to be long oil but the technicals have just been awful so as uh, oil here is attempting to get back uh, north of uh, this 80 dollar level it would be the first positive sign if we can see crude uh, back above 80 now there's a substantial trade range sitting in the mid 80s uh, that was uh, the trade range uh, through much of uh, july through november and if the price action could just get back into that uh, pocket of um, high volume notes in terms of volume profiling, I think that that would be an interesting level to actually start to entertain that a new bull trend may be establishing itself. But you can see us trading below 80 here. It's so premature to get overexcited. I'm looking for uh, uh, obviously uh, some sort of signs that crude oil's begun a new accumulation cycle. And just uh, wanted to touch on two other quick charts here, Nick. Uh, I wanted to touch on copper and, and, and physical uranium on pages eight and nine. And what we had last week was a distinct breakout of of copper obviously china reopening theme was was uh what the anchor of that now that uh we are approaching uh, the four and a quarter level on copper was some a level that i've been uh, watching for many months and it took a, all the way until this first week of the new year first few weeks of the new year for copper to actually finish this move up here this is actually a critical moment i mean if we see a period where dollar continues to remain structurally in a corrective phase and risk on stays the theme for the next you know coming weeks uh, maybe there's room for all of these charts to have even another substantial bull impulse but this is now uh, technical levels where uh, were these were my targets for a lot of these charts um, going over the last couple months I'm I think uh, I'm uh, gonna take a very neutral stance on many of these on the short term but where I am a little more cautiously bullish is on page nine the uranium. Obviously, we've had uranium specials on macro voices for running for the holiday period. And uranium, uh, the, the physical uh, uranium trust uh, from Sprott has uh, sort of come to life in the last week. And uh, what I'm going to be watching is whether the bulls can hold on to these gains. We've been um, in a, a, a kind of a, a, a very neutral trade range of uranium for much of the 2022 year.
year. And it'll be really interesting to see whether or not uh, we can um, uh, start to see uh, uranium put together some uh, bullish uh, follow through on some of these trend moves that could get things uh, started. And uh, I'm going to be watching that for sure. Folks, if you enjoy Patrick's chart decks, you can get them every single day of the week with a free trial of Big Picture Trading. The details are on the last pages of the slide deck or just go to bigpicturetrading.com. That concludes this edition of Macro Voices. Be sure to tune in each week to hear feature interviews with the brightest minds in finance and macroeconomics. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com, the Internet's premier source of online education for traders. Please visit BigPictureTrading.com for more information. Please register your free account at MacroVoices.com. Once registered, you'll receive our free weekly research roundup email containing links to supporting documents from our featured guests and the very best free financial content our volunteer research team could find on the internet each week. You'll also gain access to our free listener discussion forums and research library. And the more registered users we have, the more we'll be able to recruit high-profile feature interview guests for future programs. So please register your free account today at macrovoices.com if you haven't already. You can subscribe to Macro Voices on iTunes to have Macro Voices automatically delivered to your mobile device each week free of charge. You can email questions for the program to mailbag at macrovoices.com and we'll answer your questions on the air from time to time in our mailbag segment. Macro Voices is presented for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information presented on Macro Voices should not be construed as investment advice. Always consult a licensed investment professional before making investment decisions. The views and opinions expressed on Macro Voices are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the show's hosts or sponsors. Macro Voices, its producers, sponsors, and hosts Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna shall not be liable for losses resulting from investment decisions based on information or viewpoints presented on Macro Voices. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com and by funding from Fourth Turning Capital Management, LLC. For more information, visit MacroVoices.com.